Okay, so welcome back to the 106 Diaries. So this is actually going to be a really long episode today, so I've just combined essentially like three weeks of training into this one video. I've just like condensed it down, so I've not got every single clip that I filmed, because if I did that, this would have been like a 25, 30 minute long video. So I just sort of combined like the sort of top sets. I usually only film top sets for lifts, I don't film everything. And then for sprints, I usually film like most of my reps. But as I say, I've just like put in the the main sort of reps. So the first first one there was some block starts. It was 50 meter block starts. So on this day, actually, John hadn't programmed my like training yet because I was in Australia and the time zones didn't really line up to jump on a call with him. So I just sort of like did what I thought the progression would be. I thought you know we did snatches from the floor, so maybe hang snatches would be the next progression. And then I was doing like some plyo push-ups, so I was like, why not do a little bit of bench as well. I've honestly not benched in so long, but I definitely feel like my bench is a lot stronger than what it was. I think just because I'm a bit heavier than what I was earlier in the year. I think I did like a triple with 70 kilos earlier in the year, and like 70 kilos was my max before that point. But I definitely think like, you know, 80, 90 kilos on bench is something that's doable. I'm pretty sure I mentioned that last video, but... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's doable, but first block session back was alright. I think technically I was quite rusty, but I can't really complain too much. It was a, a decent session regardless. And then yeah, here's my warm-ups for Wednesday. So one thing I would say is possibly the Monday and the Wednesday were affected by the heat. I feel like more so than like the first few days that I was here, which is I guess kind of strange. You would think that you'd sort of get better, but for some reason it might have just been because it was warmer on these days when I was doing these um, like sprints but for whatever reason I think the heat just took a lot of like it took it out of me quite a lot I think just because I've never really sprinted in anything above like I think the warmest I'd sprinted in before this was about 27 back home and like that's a humid 27 so this is like a, a dry 31, 32 that I'm sprinting in and it was just like, I think it was hard to acclimatise to it and I feel like that maybe played a little bit into it but it was also possibly like what I'd done on the, you know, the Monday maybe that was why the Wednesday session was so much worse but yeah, on Wednesday I just felt like I was wearing like lead boots when I was sprinting, like it didn't feel like it was clicking, my adductor felt quite tight so I just ended up cutting the session, I think I did like three reps like standing start and then yeah, I just felt really bad. Like the times did not feel good at all. The time, well, times didn't look good. It didn't feel good, and I was like, yeah, let's just cut the session. I was gonna do some dunks, but my knee just was not in a. It was not in a position to actually, you know, jump. I feel like if I jumped, my knee might have actually, you know, exploded. Just cut that out, and then I did the lifts. My knee didn't feel too bad during the lifts. There was nothing that I was in like super deep knee flexion that was gonna sort of like aggravate it. So I was able to still do that. This was actually my last session in Australia. I managed to. I think this. I think I actually had a velocity PR with 75 kilos. I want to say it was like 2.26 meters per second, which was like a big velocity PR for that weight. So that was a nice little send off in Australia to, you know, get a little PR before we left. Can't complain. And then yeah, some step ups that I filmed as well. And after this got a shower and then was travelling back home. So I was my flight out was at like 9 pm I think Australian time. So I managed to get a little gym session and managed to get some food beforehand and then after that flew back over. So flying back over part was like the the kind of like mental gymnastics of it was a bit a bit strange like it just felt really weird to be on a plane for so long and then like you know you're on a plane when it's like light outside and then it's like dark when you get off a plane and it's like disorientating not really knowing like the sort of like time and day like I knew it obviously because I can see it on my phone but it just feels like it's like very it's a really strange experience but yeah, so I flew from Australia to Japan which is like going back on myself pretty much and then from Japan to Switzerland, and then Switzerland back around to the UK. So it was like, yeah, it was just like a lot of flying. I think it was a 14 and a half hour, 14 hour flight from Japan to Switzerland. And then when I was in Switzerland, I did my little general day and I found this tightrope in the gym that I trained at. So 
just decided to try and walk it and I managed to do it f like it, I did, wasn't able to do it first try but I was able to do it after trying to like after like getting the technique down I, I think I went too slow to start with and then once I kind of like added a bit of speed to it it felt a lot more natural and I was able to balance a lot better but that was just like a little side quest that I did at, the, at that gym so it was like a 24 hour gym and I was able to get like a day pass to it so actually no it wasn't a 24 hour gym I think it closed at like 9 but I managed to get a day pass and I like touched down at 6 p.m so it's like I was able to train at that gym because of the sort of like circumstances and it was a free day pass so I honestly can't complain so that was quite good compared to obviously Singapore when I you know wasn't able to do that so yeah that was that was flying back over then I got back in the UK did my you know hill sprints did my Friday workout it took a bit of like it took a little bit of like um you know, like motivation to get up and actually do it like I really couldn't be bothered to actually do it um, I guess not motivation I guess like discipline it took to you know just go and do the session get it done but I did it I left it quite late like I got back home around about midday you know touched down back in the UK at 8 p.m. into Manchester and then after that my dad picked me up and drove back home got back about midday and then after midday I was like you know, I just kind of like lay on the couch, I think, for like a few hours just to try and like get back, you know, get back into things. And yeah, it was just like very strange to, you know, be back in the UK. And I think I was like mentally a little bit fried from all the flying, but I think it was good to you know, move around a little bit and, you know, just get some work in. So then after that, we had like obviously a. Uh, I think it was a general day on the Saturday, just some like three step strength that I don't really, like I don't film it because it's not really too important, it's not like a, a main workout, I just try and film like the main clips. Maybe one day I will film some more of the general stuff but you know for now I don't really see a point in doing that. So then Monday session was my second session back in blocks, did some sprint float sprint. So at this point just because I hadn't done blocks much, I really wanted to try and run from blocks a little bit more. And it was 20 meter sprint, 30 meter float, 10 meter re-acceleration. So the final rep was a little bit slower than the the third rep. So I think it was four reps I did in total. Third rep was re really good. It was 7:37 without the reaction time. Uh, sorry, with the reaction time, and then without a reaction time, I think it was like 7:24, 7:22, something like that. So it was honestly like a very good rep for like speed wise it was very good especially for having like a long float in the middle of it and one thing i would say is the block technique for that rep didn't look amazing but i think just as i say i'm quite rusty but the times like the first 20 meters i think i did it in like 318 or it might have even been quicker than 318 it might have been like 314 but it was actually really quick and it wasn't far off sort of my all-time best with a reaction time on the e star for a 20 meter rep which is like i don't know it's like i guess it's like surprising because obviously it's my second week back in blocks and like on top of that i'm obviously still recovering from australia like i went to a lecture when i was in i think it was first year and it was a coach for I want to say it was Team GB like Rugby Sevens and he was talking about how when they went to Rio it was to like acclimatize to the time zones it's one day for each hour of the time zone so it's like Australia obviously it's gonna take me about eight days to get back to like some form of normality obviously some people will take longer some people will take less time it's obviously you know person to person dependent but yeah, I feel like it definitely took me a while to get back into things, but that session was a very good session. Like everything felt like it was going well. Felt like my technique looked quite nice in it as well. Apart from the blocks, as I say, I was rusty with that, but it was a good session regardless. Then the lifts on that day had some you know, snatches, just moving them really fast. It was 40 kilos that I did for just some like fast reps. And then I was just doing some slow squats as well, just because my knee was quite fried. So I thought it's best to try and at least do something to sort it out. I'm, you know, getting sprint volume in, so you know, squats are just acting as like a, a strength exercise anyway, and sprints will, you know, transfer the strength, regardless of if, regardless of if it is like slow or not. I'll still get like some sort of 
performance transfer with it. So yeah, then Wednesday's session was more sprints from blocks, so it was some 50 meter reps and the first few block starts I did I actually felt really good, like, like from a technical standpoint I felt like I was really hitting some good positions, but then just like after that I started to get into the longer sprint, like the 50 meters, and I just felt like I was way too, you know, everything just felt like really weird, I felt like I wasn't able to run fast, and on top of that my adductor was like playing up again, which is like, it's sort of been playing up for the past few weeks anyway, so I was able to sprint through it a lot, but I just felt, you know, I did like three reps of 50 and I was like, right, I'm just going to cut the final rep because I didn't want to, you know, tempt fate and I wasn't feeling great and I think sometimes it's like if you're not feeling great it's important to just say is there a point to like continuing the work that I'm like doing today and you know at that point I was like right there's no point in doing any more because it could do more damage than good that's like actually an interesting point so on my story my Instagram story on I think it was the Wednesday of this week so the Wednesday the 17th I put up a little poll and I like asked people if they think you know getting lower quality training in is better than doing nothing so my sort of like thoughts on this is it's sort of like a it's like an interesting thing I think if you're just going for solely performance improvement it's possibly better to actually just like cut out any junk volume there's no point in doing it but at the same time it's important to obviously have something to unload off of because if you always just cut out low quality sessions then you're gonna eventually when you want to peak you're gonna struggle to peak because you don't have much volume to sort of unload off of so there's an extent of you need the volume because if you don't have volume then you're not gonna unload off anything and a perfect example of this actually was when I ran my first sub 11 race I had the Scottish Championships um, I think it was 13 or 14 days later so I was feeling like really sore after that so I was like right let's just rest 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 I think I rested four days and I was still feeling quite sore but I was like let's get some some training in let's do something did that and then I was still following quite a low volume sore protocol after that and it got to the Scottish Championships and I just felt very flat and I think a big thing I think the reason for that obviously was that I'd he unloaded a little bit before I ran the sub 11 and then unloaded afterwards and then I was still sort of in this unload phase for way too long maybe if the Scottish Championships had been like a week earlier I would have been in better shape or had even been like you know 10 days after I ran the sub 11 but because of that time and the time beforehand I didn't have something to unload off of therefore my performance sort of like decreased to a point where I was like you know a tenth off wide van when I did the sub 11 so it's like it's something to certainly think about I think it's like on a given day you have to decide whether or not you think it's a good idea to do the sprints and it's important obviously to listen to your body if you feel like you're you know very tight and you feel like the quality of work's not that good then it's probably a good idea to just cut some reps off but yeah, sort of like, I guess as a sprinter and as like an athlete that's training for high performance in like an explosive sport where, you know, an injury is, you know, pretty likely, it's important just to be smart about things and not to push too hard sometimes. I think that's something that I really struggle with is sometimes cutting work out because I'm scared that if I miss a day, I'm going to sort of ruin everything, but I need to sometimes like reality check myself and just remember that, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day and you know likewise like your performance not going to decrease because you miss one day out or something like that anyway i went off onto a little bit of a tangent there but hopefully that was maybe helpful for some people it gives you a little insight into i guess some of my method like my methodology of like training but yeah i'll try and get back to where i was at so we did the 75 kilo cleans after those 50 meter sprints because i still wanted to get the weight room volume in because that didn't feel like it was it didn't feel like it was the cause of the problems with my adductor so I felt like I was still able to do that without having any sort of like negative recourse and then yeah hit a velocity PR with 75 kilos again I think it moved at 2.31 meters per second which was very quick so it was good to sort of see that 
you know, I'm still in this kind of like good state of performance. It's just a shame, as I say, that the sprints didn't feel amazing. Then after that, on Friday, hill sprints, lifts. I think the 120 moved way better than what I had the previous week, but obviously the previous week was when I came back from Australia, so can't really compare. Can't really compare it, I guess. It's like apples and orange, oranges almost. And then, yeah, that was like a very good good rep. I think it moved actually at 1.41 meters per second, which is a velocity PR for that weight. It might have been the week after actually that it moved at 1.41. I mean, I'll see in a minute when it comes up, but yeah, it moved definitely a lot faster than it had the week prior anyway, which was good. And then after that, we were starting to get into like the Christmas sort of period for training, which meant that it was going to be very hard to essentially just get my training done. I think that's one thing that I sort of like hate about the holidays is just the fact that it is hard to really, you know, just continue a regular schedule. So it's just sort of like, I was just trying to really do my best. I was still able to do all the like lifting stuff because the gym I train at is like one of those like pinnacle gyms that's 24 hours. So I don't always train at this gym. I train at like different gyms, but this is one of the gyms that I've got on sort of like on ice almost for when I need to use it when it's convenient to use so I was able to do that I was able to still do some training but I had a workout on Christmas Day it was some it was supposed to be I think it was sprint float sprint some I think it was like five times 60 meters I did the warm-ups and I was just feeling like really tight and I just didn't think it was a good idea to push so I just ended up cutting it out probably wouldn't have been a high quality session anyway so I probably didn't miss much but I still as I said did the weights I actually did some drop jumps as well I think it hit like a 3.9 RSI but I was just being cautious because obviously I've had plantar fasci fasciitis I've been dealing with that so it's starting to definitely get a lot better now but just at that time period I was like right we'll be cautious with it I just did a few jumps and as well my knees weren't in the best state at that point so I wanted to really focus on like a low ground contact time and like barely bending my knees at all and yeah hit like a 3.9 RSI which isn't too bad honestly so that's what I did I subbed that out for the sprints I sometimes do like to just do like drop jumps or something if I can't get my sprints done I feel like it's a it's a good little replacement that you can use to still try and get some sort of like plyometric volume in so that's what I did and then I did my lifts then 27th I was working so I wasn't able to get up to a track so I had to do it like after work and it was dark and the session just was not good so I ended up I think I cut the last rep just because the quality of it was like I think it was like really bad and it was like worse than worse than like any any sprint session I'd ever done before it was just very slow so I, yeah I just cut it out then Friday back round to hill sprints as you just saw so hill sprints and then some lifts and managed to move 120 quite well I think on that day I don't know if that was the day I hit 141 or 1.41 meters per second peak velocity or if it was the week before but I think 120 still moved really well so yeah that's the last sort of like three weeks of training in the run-up to my season opener so next week's episode will be the season opener so be on the lookout for that and yeah, I'll see you in next week's video.